First. What up, Boopy? Alright, we got a new version of Ghosty to install, so let's install that. Cheers. I just did a bunch of stretching on the floor behind me before I started, so I'm feeling nice and limber. All right, let's jump in here. We'll do a get pool. Cool, we're already good there. Uh, did I already bump the font size? I did not. There we go. So yesterday we ended at a weird spot where I was trying to run this test chat um, function. Hi, I've lurked for a while. What's your current impression of Glean and how functional is it? Well, I appreciate you lurking, Ray. Um, that means a, a lot. I, I love that people tune in and lurk. Um, but Gleam is, Gleam is potentially going to end up as my favorite language. Um, it's essentially everything I want in a language minus the only thing that it doesn't have that would make it perfect is a native story. So I'm, I'm not going to use Gleam for things like a CLI um, or anything that I want a, a native binary for. Um, as far as functional programming, I think Gleam is like the best intro to functional programming you could have. Um, yeah, I, I really, really, really like Gleam. Pulled tendon, left wrist, and can't push up. Ah, oh, damn. I had a really bad repetitive stress injury like two or three years ago um, in my forearm just from, I guess, bad posture and tech typing. And I used to sleep with a, um, a wrist guard on. The wrist guard helped a lot. I mean, obviously a pulled tendon is way different than a repetitive stretch injury, but I, uh, I get it. Does it have strong guarantees about stuff like pure functions, etc.? Yeah, so all data is immutable. Um, all data is immutable. Uh, it runs on the beam. So you get all the guarantees of something like Erlang and Elixir. Um, you can also compile to JavaScript. So you basically get a safer type system than TypeScript if you want to write uh, like JavaScript applications or libraries. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. All right, I'm gonna pop this open here because I'm going to try to grab, um, actually, let's comment this out. We need to grab new tokens this morning. So if I bring over our REST client, this doesn't work, that makes sense. I do this, I should, this should get me a new access token. So let's come down here and into get access token. Oh, I bet it's these zeros possibly. What up, John? Yeah, Ray. Duh. If you have like any more specific questions or anything, or have questions about the project I'm working on, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to uh, go down tangents and rabbit holes. All right, I'm gonna blur my screen for just a second while I grab this token. Okay, so that's that. Grab that, come over here, manage environment, throw that in, come over here, grab that, throw that in. All right, that looks good. Reset and clear. All right, now we can unblur. 
So I just ran our flow to get a new access token. And if we come over here, theoretically, when we run this, so I still have a bad OAuth token, which is confusing to me. Because, hmm. So the tokens I'm getting back from this are invalid. I wonder if it's this. I wonder if I grabbed the wrong user ID. No, that's right. I'm new to the whole Beam thing. My main langs were Java, C++, the Rust, but I've grown more and more interested in functional programming. I think if you like a lot of the stuff in Rust, like uh, pattern matching and using like result and option types. I think you'll, you, I think you'll like functional programming. You're from Brazil. Welcome. I want to, I want to get down to Brazil at some point and go to Interlagos for the F1 race. The only thing I can think of is that maybe my client secret is bad, but I feel like I would get errors somewhere. So if we look at our access, make sure I'm not dumb here. Let me go look at our access token type. Ah, chat, I'm a, I'm a silly goose. All right, so let's, um, I have to blur again. What do you guys want to listen to this morning? What kind of music? You want to listen to like pop punk? Do you want to listen to some EDM? Do you want to listen to lo-fi? Some like 2000s hip hop? What are we feeling? Okay, so looking at this access token, the payload I just got back, that first bit is the refresh token. I thought that was the access token. That's part of the problem. Drop that in there, and then this guy is our access token. Minecraft OST? What is OST? Ah, okay. Let me see if I can find that. <clears throat> Once we get the... Um, once we get the pub sub thing working on this, I'm gonna publish a new version and we're gonna start building an actual, uh, my, we're gonna rewrite my Twitch bot with Glitch 
and we're gonna add Apple Music integrations. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool. Aria Math. Did I go the right thing there? Oh, am I still hex, hex pixelized? Oh shit, I'm an idiot. Uh, no, I did not. It is a plugin by another streamer. Uh, his name is Finite Singularity. Finite Singularity. He makes a bunch of really awesome OBS plugins. No, nah, we're not frozen. I was just, uh, I forgot to turn off pixelation. So we should have a good user token now. Actually, I have to, <laughs> I have to blur one more time. Uh, one second, I'm sorry. There's just too many places where I have to work on opening up environment variables that I have to be careful. Uh, manage environment, access token, yoink you, view in Word and paste. Copy you, paste you in, grab the refresh token and paste you in. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Right, quit, reset and clear, unpixelize, and we'll go back in, go to one. That's weird. Oh, I bet I have to do a Duran below. What up, Armin? What up, Nightshade? All right, so down here now, if we put in um, test chat instead, we should get a ma message posting to chat. Rip. Invalid access token. Why? <laughs> I just updated it. Oh, I bet I didn't do it allowed down here. We did it. All right, everything's working again. We can post to chat. Let's go. Man, I need your keyboard for real. What's the branded model? It is a Keychron uh, Q4. Uh. All right, so we can talk to chat. We have our refreshing auth provider. So that means that our auth provider is working. So when we call get token, all that work we did the past couple days just worked. That's also part of the beauty of Gleam, right? If you're still around, like if it compiles, it's generally gonna work. Um, which is very nice.
I mean, Rust has the result and option. You can have monads in in Rust. Like the result and the option types are monads. I don't think Rust limits you to not having monads. Traits are different. Traits are closer to like Haskell's type classes than something like monads. Um, okay. Uh, what is the next thing we need to do? I think I had like a markdown doc. I guess I lost. Let me see if I have my MVP notes over here. Let me move this. I think I deleted it. Here we go. I still have it. Send chat message, subscribe to Redemptions, handle scopes, got refresh. That's done. We can do this. Uh, we can handle scopes. Uh, we did this. And we did this. So now we just have to subscribe to Redemption. So we have to build our pub subsystem. Sweet. Okay, so it is time to probably um, go in here. Is there anything we need to clean up? Did that. All right, this music's putting me to sleep. I'm sorry, I need I need something more upbeat. We're gonna listen to a band called Set Your Goals. Uh, I don't really understand my ad settings. I kind of like set them up once. Let me show you. Uh, what's this under? Monetization, ads. These are my ad settings. I don't really under. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really fully understand it, but uh, this is what it's at. Should probably disable ads when I run ads and then manually run ads. I should do that. I'll look into that. Uh, is that not enabled? Let me see here. All right, so you're saying I want to disable pre-roll ads. So 30 second ad break equals 10 minute pre-roll free up to three minute ad break. Oh, so like, oh, that would make sense. Like when I, 
when I go to like take out the dogs, I could just roll three minutes of ads and then no one else gets ads when they join. Yeah. Good luck. Okay, so that's on now. Um, let me see if I can refresh this. Yeah, yeah, we're, we'll start doing that. Okay, so there is a, we need to integrate a uh, WebSocket server which is like, um, well, we should probably, let's just check over our open source issues this morning and then we'll jump, really jump into Gleam. Um, okay, so we have a bunch of issues here. Holy hell, let's start with this one because I know this person's been waiting on a PR from me. So, uh, so old behavior is complete. Maintain the new monorepo behaviors behind the run as monorepo flag. I've listed the behavior below to check you're good with the behaviors. I've limited the running TypeScript compiler processes to 20. My machine was able to run more, but I noticed a definite dip in performance after 20. However, I can't imagine, yeah. Run mono repo is false. Also start watch. This is awesome. This is so good. I wish I, let me see if I can, well, hold on. When run is mono repo is false and auto start is false and watch is false when you stream or one runs using the closest search upwards if the current working directory doesn't contain. Okay. When I run TSCs or TSCs or watch mode using the closest. Yep. Lovely. All right, this looks pretty good. Let's check the code. I'm happy to merge this. This guy's been really diligent about this. He updated the docs. If all with the check news, if you'd like to use all in the current working. Mm -hmm. Oh, he put type annotations. What a legend. Okay, that all looks good. That's fine. That looks good. That looks great. Find nearest that will search up. Otherwise, he uses rip grep to search. Okay. I, I'm happy to merge this. This is awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much. Can I buy you a coffee? Do you have Venmo or something similar? Ben FC. Uh, Ben FC. You're gonna fix the overlay? I am. Oh, uh, wait, what's, what's broke? Nah, dude, Badger's on the screen all day today, right? <laughs> it's Badger's day. All right, so that's going into main. Now people have it, so let's cut a release. We're gonna do a major version bump here. So let's go here and we're going to say draft new release. This will be v2.2.0 uh, 2 .2 and 
and this will be v2.2.0 generate release notes publish release great um, that's good let's go back to our stuff over here we have two PRs fix projects name with nested DIRs one's from John and the other one is from MB Powers. I will also I would also consider adding check then. So that's oh, that's a good look. Mm -hmm. All right. So this person just change that which that's not the right fix because we don't want to support um nested directories i think all right john what was your pr this was what needed fixed mm. so why I'm not sure either of these are the right fix. Where do I want to test this? Right here. I don't understand what re equals re dot test foo slash bar. Well, we should just disable names that have slash in it, right? So why is that? So right here are my regexes failing the check. On a test case, Becca UI parse something something strips the baster. Is that? All right, let's go back and look at this quick. So we come in here and we have our init wizard. So we submit the name. Submit the name goes to project.validate. Parse, see parse project name in dir. That's probably where the problem is you're saying. What was that file? Valid uh, core FS. Parse. Man, I wrote a lot of code for this. Parse project name and dirt. Trim trailing slash. If the string ends with slash, okay, that's fine. Okay, that seems fine. And now we want to go into the validation. So let's pop that and go into here. How is that? Parse project name in dir returns. Oh. 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 Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so this needs to be... Okay, okay, okay. I know how I want this fixed. So I'm gonna paste the same thing on both of your PRs. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's the other PR? Whatever, we'll start here. And what was this fix again? Yeah, we don't want this one. Um, rather than this fix and supporting nested directories, I would like to prohibit nested directories. Let's instead update this function in to do let's instead of this to return a result and uh, fail if there are invalid characters or a slash And then the file is this guy. And I'm gonna copy this link. And John, I'm just gonna throw, since you're here watching, I'm just gonna throw this a link to this on your PR. Okay. That should be all of our open source we need to look at this morning. Yeah, good find on that, good digging. I appreciate that. Okay. So now we can get back to Gleam, what we're actually supposed to be doing. And we want to go look at Mist, which is raw hats. Um, I believe there is a WebSocket. Um, here we go. What's the 100% best keyboard? My keyboard. Somebody tell Meta we wrote OCaml again on stream today. The heck? All right. So our website upgrade a request to handle WebSockets. If the request is malformed or the WebSocket process fails to initialate or initialize an empty 400 response will be sent to the client. The on init method will be called when the actual WebSocket process is started. So let's go to our event sub and we are going to have to change. Let's just delete a bunch of this code because, well, I guess we should make sure that there's not anything super important in here. I think we can get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Maybe. 
We'll keep that for now, but I don't think it's super important. Wow, I don't remember any of this code. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, we'll we'll uh we'll add a bunch of new uh tracking and stuff now, Nightshade. So we connect to that, we get an ID back, we create a sub, we use the session ID, we get that back, we get notifications, notifications. So it looks like that session ID is gonna be pretty important. Um, <laughs> it's a closed message, okay. So we need to handle closed messages. Twitch replies with a welcome message. All right. No more. I don't remember when this was like some of the first Gleam code I ever wrote. I think I might just delete this all and start from scratch. And in here, we'll do a similar pattern as we did with the API client. Just come in here and we'll say pub opaque type client. And this will be our client for now. And what state does this thing need to ha handle? Twitch sends event notifications at least once, but if Twitch is unsure about whether you received a notification or resend the event. All right, so we need to think about, about um, we need to think about item potency. All right, so when I connect, how the hell do I freaking connect? This message contains, so we definitely need like a session ID. So this thing is gonna have a uh, session ID, which will be, uh, I guess an option string potentially. This might end up moving out. Uh, let's go ahead and port gleam slash option and we need to bring in uh, option type option do that so it looks like we have this like generic message type so let's do that too so we'll come in here we have a message and we'll say pub type message and this is not equals TypeScript brain uh, this is gonna have a um, I don't know. Let's just call this payload for now. And this is gonna have uh, we need nested records, so we're gonna need a public type of metadata. And this is gonna be metadata. And metadata is gonna have a message ID, which will be a string. It's going to have a message type which will be um, pub type uh, message type. And that's going to have a session welcome. 
and we'll say uh, it's going to have a message type, and we'll write pub function. We might move this out to another module at some point, but we're just going to start here to keep things simple. Message to string. And this is going to take a message. This is going to be message type. Message type, message type. And this will return a string. And in here, we're just going to say case, message type. And we only have one constructor right now, so that will be session welcome. And then we'll do the opposite direction, right? We'll say pub function uh, from string. This will be string. And this is going to be a result of message type or nil. And we'll come in here and we'll just say case stir is going to be a session welcome. And now we'll return our welcome constructor. Otherwise, we're going to return nil. And that will be an error. This will be an OK. OK, that looks good. And then back up here, this has a message timestamp, which is going to be a string. Looks like it's going to be a UTC string. All right, so we got that. And then we also have um, this payload thing. I'm not sure how this payload changes. OK, so that is the thing that changes. So then we have, um, this will be metadata. Oh, that's not what we want. Metadata, metadata. And then we'll have this payload, which will be payload, our generic type. And then we can add a decoder. Let's go ahead and add decoders for these. And we can use our, uh, use this as our reference. Or actually, we can use our uh, access token. I think we have a good decoder in there. Yeah. So let's yoink this. Boom. And this is going to return a message. And this probably needs our payload decoder. And that's going to be a decoder of payload. And this will be a message of payload. Right, we have to go grab our decoder. Let's go to the top of the file. Whoops. Paste that in. And this is going to be a message. And then we need to make, um, we should start and make our metadata decoder. So let's just say to do there, we'll yank this, come down here, pub decoder, and this is going to have nothing in it. And this is going to have metadata. Close that up, come down here. Yeah, I was following Ryan a bit when he was working on this, and it sounds like it's going to be really annoying, but we only care about some events to get like this MVP out the door, so we're not going to go balls to the wall up front. Eventually we will, because I want, I want Glitch to be like the de facto standard uh, Gleam Twitch SDK. Um, and I also want to have it be like a good example of how to integrate with APIs. Um, and build API clients. Um, I might try to sync up with the person that writes Gleam Weekly, or maybe I'll write a blog post. I don't know. Um, but let's grab this. Well, we can just copy, we can just type data. It's going to be dynamic. And this is going to say data, and we're going to pipe that, oops, pipe that into dynamic decode three. D code three, and that's going to have our metadata constructor, and then we're going to try to grab dynamic dot field, and we're going to grab uh, what was it called? 
message ID, and that will be a dynamic string. Oops, and then we want to grab, we can yoink that, paste that down. Uh, we need a decoder for our message type. So we'll do that in a second. We'll leave it as a string right now. Do that just to get our decoder partially complete. Do that. Finally, our timestamp. And then we're going to write a decoder for our message type. This needs to be metadata decoder. And this will be message type decoder. And this is going to be What is the function signature for this? It like is um decoder takes dynamic and returns a result to your decoders. Okay, great. So given that this needs to be like dynamic dot string and that's going to take data. Uh, this needs to return meta message type. And then we have to pipe that. String probably returns a result, right? Probably returns a decoder. Yeah. We want to result dot try. Dot try. And then here we want to do message type from string. And um we probably want to map the error. Let's go bring in result. Import gleam slash result. Yeah, this is going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have an example of doing that anywhere? Decode error. Okay, that's what we want to do right there. Actually, this is exactly the pattern we want to copy. So let's grab that and we'll yoink that and we'll come over here and we'll paste that in there. And this is going to be message type from string. We expected a message type. We found a string of some value. Great. So now we have our message type decoder, which means we can come up here and we can replace this again. And over here, this will be our message type decoder. Nice. I really, I know this is like a lot of boilerplate to do JSON and Gleam, but it is straightforward and easy and very clear what's happening. And I like the composability of it. I know a lot of people in the Discord have like complained about this. And if they integrated, imagine being able to press uh, open up code actions on this, right? And then it's like generate decoder. Like that would be sick. I would be so like, I wouldn't even need like compile time stuff. Like if I could just have like code gen for me, like 
that pops up a menu, generate decoder, boom, spits out this block. That'd be really cool. Okay, so now we can delete that, we can come here, and this is going to be a message. The message is going to get metadata, and that's going to be our metadata decoder. And that's a function. And then we have payload, and we can get rid of these. This is going to be replaced with two. Um, we don't need that. In fact, we don't even need this pipe, but this will be payload decoder. Why would that be? Oh, right, there we go. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. All right, so now we can decode messages. Let's do a commit. Add initial message uh, type and decoders. Why did that? I want that message. Yoink. Push. Great. Okay, we're looking good. Let's go back to our client. And let's close this side. Let's close that. Half that.
Okay, so let's think about this. This makes sense how uh, Mist handles this now. Excal, X, why can I not type Excaladraw, please? Am I logged in? Whatever. So let's say we have, this is gonna be glitch, glitch event sub. And this is, we're gonna need a, um, we're gonna need a missed web server. So this will be missed WebSocket server. And let's just make a box for um, Twitch. And we'll make you center that. You're in here. And these need to go back and forth. And we need another arrow back and forth between there. So where does the client sit in this? And where do our actors and OTP abstractions sit, right? if we look at this, wow, I just used my mouse in Neovim, that was weird. We get a pub sub client and we just give callbacks, which I think makes sense. How did Ryan do this? Uh, Elixir, uh, Twitch. I don't even know Ryan's freaking. I surely starred this. Your stars. Uh, 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 um. Maybe I didn't star his shit. Damn, I didn't. Nightshade, do you know Ryan's uh, GitHub handle? Do I follow him? Bump, bump, bump it up. I don't even think I follow Ryan. Oh, there he is. Ryan Winchester. Slack Elixir. Where are your other repos? I know you have other... Twitch, Twitch event sub, here we go. Hello streams. This is what we want. We're basically building the same thing. So what's he doing here? He has uh, some macro thingy, blah, 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 not important. WebSocket. This is the WebSocket client supervisor. So he's supervising the WebSocket, that makes sense. What state does this thing have? An access token, channel IDs, client ID, a handler. That's the callback stuff we were just talking about. Start link. We have a new way of doing this. We build our nice like little provider pattern. So he has this children, which is a WebSocket, WebSocket client, which I don't think is in this file. Here it is. Handle frames. So this is maybe lower level than we're gonna have to get maybe, I'm not sure. We are gonna have to make a subscription type for sure.
So let's uh let's make a tweet here. Let's um try to get some attention on Twitter. Create an image for a Twitch stream titled Coffee Encoding. Please put that text on a coffee mug with no typos where we are working on building a WebSocket server client for Twitch. The vibes should be uh, warm and inviting, yet techy and use dark pastel colors. And we're gonna make another tweet. X.com. We'll say coffee and coding. And we'll throw in our little boom. And we'll grab a little lambda symbol, which I did yesterday. So let's go grab that so I don't have to. April 6th, that wasn't yesterday. Where's my coffee and coding stream from yesterday? Here we go. You like that, come back over here, throw that there. Today we are adding a WebSocket server using Mist. Let's add a link and shh for, uh, actually we'll give the GitHub link. Grab this, make sure Raw Hack gets some credit here. We're adding a WebSocket server using Mist to connect to Twitch's uh, event sub services. Come check out what Gleam and OTP look like in practice. Twitch.tv slash DMM Mulroy. Boom. And let's see if we got a good uh, image out of ChatGPT. That's sick. Take that. Let's generate another one. Oh shit, that's not what I want. Let's uh, dump that in there. All right, chat, I'm gonna try running that one minute and 30 second ad uh, to prevent pre-roll from happening. Um, so I will be back in a minute and 30 seconds if you're not already. Um, see you on the other side of ads. Whatever, we'll use this. Okay. So we probably want a difference between the client and the server. How do we set this up for our token fetcher? So maybe we just have a server 
We also want a subscription. I think. Uh, let's wait on that. So we'll write server. And the server is going to basically copy this pattern of like this right here. So let's yoink that, throw this over here, and we're gonna rename anything that has token fetcher in it. To WebSocket server. And we'll just delete that for now. And I don't know what this is going to have yet, so let's just delete that. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here yet. So the architecture Ryan used <laughs> okay, I think I see how I want to do this now. We're gonna have a supervisor be out here and this is gonna be event sub.gleam. Event sub.gleam will be the supervisor. So uh, we're gonna need in here, uh, type, pub type, event sub. And this is gonna be, I don't know what this is gonna have in it yet, but we're just gonna do that. And we'll say pub function new, which returns, um, we need to return like a, I don't know what we need to return yet. Cause this is gonna be a supervisor. You probably want a start function. Uh, yeah. And this will be a to do. We probably want to shut down. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And let's go look at the supervisor docs for uh, Gleam OTP. Coppinger, my man, how are we doing? If y'all aren't following Coppinger, you're 100% uh, missing out. 
He's the uh, most wholesome streamer this side of the Mississippi. One of my favorite people to hang out with and stream. Constantly on the grind. He's working on some super cool stuff. So definitely check him out. And also probably one of the most talented uh, UX designers I know. I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. We are just working on building a WebSocket server to talk with uh, Twitch. And we're trying to figure out like uh, Erlang OTP stuff at the same time. So a child spec, this type contains all the information required to start a new child and add it to children. So we probably want a child spec for our WebSocket server. We gotta start result. What is a spec? This data structure holds all the values required by the start spec, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we get a start spec. So we need to figure out how to make a freaking spec. How do we make a spec? Max frequency. If you do not need to configure the behavior of your supervisor, consider using the start function. Start. So this is going to take a function that receives children of nil and returns children of a. Uh, I don't build the Gleam compiler from source. I'm getting the Gleam compiler from Nix. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Coppinger, let me pull up a map in incognito and see if I cannot dox my complete location. Uh, is this going to drop a thing on me? No, it's not. Excellent. Okay. So if we're looking at the L United Statos, uh, I live in this state right here. And specifically, I live in Raleigh. And even more specifically, I live somewhere in North Raleigh. Maybe in for in San Francisco. I'm actually East Coast. You'll be in SF. When are you going to be in SF? But I grew up in Pennsylvania. I grew up in this tiny town called York. Then I went to school in this even tinier town called Mansfield. Then I moved to central Illinois to... Where is... Bloomington Normal at, right here. This is where State, Form, State Farm's headquarters is. And then I moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and I lived in Scottsdale, and that was a lot of fun. Actually, right here, this is the apartment complex I lived in in Scottsdale. This was so fun to live at, chat. It was all just a bunch of 20-year-olds living in this place. Fucking party all the time. If I say the words, if I die in Raleigh, at least I will die free. Do not fuck around with me, Coppinger. That song, listen, I, so I was in a fraternity in college and you can't be in a fraternity in the United States without having drunkenly sang that song at 3 a.m. about a hundred times. I have a friend who grew up in York. That's wild. Yeah, York's uh, an interesting place. Senator, we like the song. You broke your window, Davey? How'd you do that? All right. We should also go look at the Learn OTP repo, because um, that's been really helpful. for our supervisors. So a worker, does a worker take a subject, I guess? We give the actor a subject for this process and send us a message on it. Remember it needs to send us back a subject so we can talk to it directly.
All right, we probably want to look at start spec. Oh, I broke your window in college. I did break Davy's window in college. I dove onto his bed and rolled, and as I rolled, my feet went through his bedroom window. All right, so what does this thing return? Duck, duck, goose returns. Uh, duck, duck, goose start. You return as subject. Okay, I thought so. Okay. All right, hold on. This is hard to follow. We set up our worker and we give the actor a subject for this process to send us messages on it. Remember, it needs to send us back a subject so we can talk to it directly. So this is our mailbox. And then we create a worker and this must be the game subject. And then we say supervisor.start and we add the game. And this is our process.receive parent subject. Yeah, we're receiving on our mailbox. This is confusing, a subject that has a subject. All right, how did Brawl Hat set this up? I wish this had better docs. Oh wait, there was a I I there was a Gleam Weekly gmail.com. I should probably move that off screen. Ba -ba -ba, Gleam Weekly supervisors. Yes, this is what we want. So let's read this. So that's our worker. We have this anonymous function that receives children. This is hard to read. So this is a lambda that takes this children from this function. And we, okay, we pass this to start, I see. and we sleep forever. Subject, worker, this must be our subject.
Okay, so this will give us a child spec back. That's good. That's probably what we want. So let's say we just have this new, this is just gonna return event sub for now. Um, so we'll say this is gonna return our event sub and then start, we need our messages. So let's say we have our function, uh, we can put that down below and we'll keep our public API up top. And we'll say handle message we need some state, but function handle uh, message. And this will be, uh, I think it's message, which we don't have yet, and state, which we also don't have yet. This will probably be state, something like that. Do that. And then uh, we're going to do case message, which we don't have yet. We'll have a start and a shutdown. And let's add a type, probably a public type, pub type message. We'll have start and shutdown. that uh, this will be event sub and now here Prepare a new supervisor type child. If you wish to prepare a new non-supervisor type child, see the worker function. Where's our good repo? One worker of the game and one supervisor. We set up our worker and we give the actor a subject for this process to send us messages with on init. So duck, duck goose is going to give us, what do you give us a shit actor? We say start spec. Okay. Well, this is new. We're going to hand this actor off to supervisor, which will manage starting for us. That means we can't simply get the subject out from the return since we don't call the start function directly. Instead, we'll have to send the subject to the parent process. When the actor starts up, the actor dot start spec function gives us more fine grained control over how the actor gets created. We get to provide a startup function to produce the initial state instead of simply providing the initial state directly. We'll take advantage of getting the chance to compute things on the new process to send ourselves. This isn't a hack, it's the intended design. The new subject provides. Okay. So this gives us back a, all right, so let's come in here. So maybe we have to carry our own
Uh, yes, it does, Xerox. So Gleam compiles to either Erlang or JavaScript. So you can either use um, bindings to like Node, Deno, or Buns, um, like system level stuff, or you can use Erlangs. Basically, you have your choice of how you wanna, which ecosystem you wanna interact with. Right now we're using uh, Erlang. So let's just say that so we have this worker function, which so we get a child spec back in here. Um, let's see. So this must be a child spec. And then when we start, all right, all right, we're just gonna YOLO this and see how far we get. We're gonna copy the pattern we did over in our token fetcher. Uh, so let's come in here and we're just gonna say actor. We'll make our supervisor an actor maybe, I don't know. Like we might not even need this new Whatever. So we'll take, um, let's bring in import gleam slash OTP slash actor. We're also going to want supervisor. And in here we'll do actor. Whoops, not this one. This will be actor dot start and this will take our state so we can delete you and then we have our handle message what is this inferring to subject message yes yeah, so we this returns our actor So this will get our, um, so we'll take event sub. And this will be a subject of message. In fact, we should go copy the pattern that we did over here, right? So let's say we have this opaque type and rather than token fetcher, this will be uh, change event sub state. And I don't know what this is gonna have in it yet, but uh, we'll just make it a empty constructor. And our event sub then becomes uh, a subject of message. No, I did not mean a float. No, this is right. Oh, we have to just bring in subject, right? Uh, does that come from Erlang? Import Gleam slash Erlang type subject. Where the hell does subject come from? It comes from Erlang process. So then down here, handle message takes message state. That looks fine. Then sub state. Then we'll come in here and it'll be um,
fact, we can we can do this. We can copy this. You link that. And our state can be a uh, status just to have some sort of data. And this will be stopped. And then in here, this will be actor.send event sub. <laughs> And this will, our message will be start. And we'll do the same thing here. This will be shut down. Paste that in there. Okay. And when we start, we want to do this like whole supervisor thing. So let's just say handle start. And this will get um, our state. And our shutdown, I'm not even sure if we're going to need this, but grab you, paste that there. Okay. And we'll say function handle start. And we're going to get state, which is event sub state. And in here, this is where we're going to want to do the supervisor stuff. So let's grab. Open the make this font size a little bit bigger. So let's just say we have. Let's just copy this pattern for now. Parent subject is going to be process.new subject. And then we're going to say uh, let WebSocket server is going to be a supervisor.worker. That come up here. Websocket server dot worker. And this is going to take what does this take? Duck duck goose start returns. I hate the symbol explorer on GitHub. Returns a result subject. So let's throw that here. So it just returns us a result for an actor, basically. So let's go make our web server. What's this upset about? All oh, right, this needs to return actor dot continue. Is it just state? All right, so let's make our, uh, this will be our WebSocket server. We'll rename that. And then we can go look at, this is gonna need pub type WebSocket server. You like that, don't know what that's gonna need yet, but we're gonna need a pub function start. Do you use Gleam, Elixir, or Camel at Vercel? I mostly use TypeScript. Um, yeah, I mostly write TypeScript at work right now. I'm looking for some places where I might be able to use some OCaml or Gleam, but I'm not gonna shoehorn it in if it's not the right solution. I would much rather be writing OCaml or Gleam than in TypeScript, but uh, So start,
Thank you for the follows, Fontev. At first cell interview, did they give you hardly cope? No, my my technical interviews for Vercel were based um, pretty pretty well good in like uh, like real application. Like I'd say my live coding one was probably like similar to a weak code easy, but it wasn't like a puzzle gotcha. Like it was very like the prompt made it more applicable to like real world stuff. And then my system design was like your run of the mill system design. Hi, how's it going? Since when are you working at Vercel? I started working at Vercel in the end of uh, February. I started February 22nd. Wait, that's not what I wanted. I want to use my uh, pencil venueness just came out. Use. I want use. Thank you. Super appreciate that, Foo. So this is going to be a subject of a subject of message. And we have to make our message type. So let's go ahead and do that. Pub type message. And this will just be a message right now. And this is going to. Do this thing where we say actor dot start spec. Does this actually start the child? <laughs> Does this hurt the child? Use guys. What are you guys doing? That's how I spoke my entire life. Use still comes out occasionally. Actor dot spec. And that's going to have a init function that does something. We'll just panic for now. Or we'll do to do. And then we have a init timeout. She just puts a thousand. And then finally a loop, which will be handle message. And we'll come down here and we'll make a function handle message, which takes um, probably a message of message and then state of, I'm not sure what yet. Case message. Um, and this will be message, and then we'll just call actor dot continue and pass in the state. If we go look at the Gleam HTTP docs, not HTTP, OTP supervisor actor start spec start an actor from a given specification. If the actor's init function returns an error, or does not return within the init timeout, then an error is returned. This needs to return an init result. So what does he return in his example then? Oh, that's interesting. So supervisor worker must pass something.
Okay, so that makes sense. We have our parent subject. So we can at least copy that. So we'll say let, uh, I like calling these mailboxes. Let, let mailbox equals uh, process dot new subject. We'll call this a parent mailbox. And then we'll say process dot send the parent mailbox, the child mailbox, our mailbox. Be like, hey, this is how you can talk to us. And then we have this selector. Okay. In here, then we say, um, let selector equals process dot new selector, and we'll pipe that into process dot selecting. And our mailbox, and we'll just pass whatever we get back into the identity function. And then we say our actor is ready. Nil and our selector. Okay. Where do we use our handle message? The loop is handle message. I see. Okay. This is starting to make sense. What is the, um, we need to go. Hello, Hermione grid. I, uh, I missed you earlier. Thank you for following. Appreciate you. What up, Yushi? All right, so we need, again, a start and stop. Shut down.
All right, let's just worry about spinning up the Mist web server first. So we're gonna need um, we're gonna need some state, right? Our WebSocket server. Let's uh, rename this um, to state. Kind of like that pattern. And this is going to have a uh, da, 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 da. we're going to copy the pattern we did with our redirect server a little bit. Where was that at? That's in here. Uh, da, 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 da. Start. Yeah. So we want to copy something like this. Do we actually need to carry them? I don't think we ever put... So I guess we can do that too. So let's copy some of the state. This is gonna need on it... Do we get the port from that? Yeah. So we assume the URI is that. And then when we handle our router, where's our router? That's how we do that. Okay, I like that pattern. Turns out I thought about some okay things. So let's say um, this needs a, a web socket URI, and that will be a URI. So let's bring in um, Lean URI, one of my favorite packages. This will be URI. And we'll bring in that type. And what else do we need? I'm not sure this needs to carry the status. Do we ever? Yeah, I guess we can put the status on there. And we'll, we'll just copy that. And what do we use this mailbox for? This is the parent's mailbox. Okay. And when do we get the parent mailbox here? Okay. So this is almost like new, right? Rather than start. So let's just rename this as, uh, yeah, we'll keep that as parent mailbox. So we'll add on here. Let's go back there, do that. I like keeping these in alphabetical order. Um, this will be mailbox. And the parent mailbox is a subject of subject message. Still haven't wrapped my head around that the whole way, but that's okay. Let's see a print. And we have our status, 
We might as well stick mist on there as well. And this will be an option of subject supervisor message. Option. I wish option was in the prelude. How's the uh, audio levels chat? They're good? Perfect. All right, so now when we make a new here, this doesn't return out what I would have expected. So it says we're returning yoink. Let's add type annotations here. And start error needs to come from actor. Okay, so up here then 23 up. And we'll do type start error. And then we're gonna come back down Okay, so this, this new function is returning the same type. Great. How does this get its initial state though? Is this ready? What is ready? It always takes nil. Start an actor from a given specification. If the actor's init function returns an error, does not return within the timeout, then an actor, then an error is returned. What up, Shadow Tiger? Where do we ever give this thing initial state, right? Because like we have this WebSocket server and like over here, the state then carries So it's saying this is nil. This should not be nil. Unless that's the specification and I'm wrong. Actor dot ready. Or loop, we're looking for loop. It takes message in state and returns next message in state. Okay, so let's strongly type this and see if we can work through the type errors. So this will be, um, our WebSocket server. Handle message, yeah. Expected type, right. I'm wondering if this is the initial state here. Like if I do can I pass in 30 right here? And this would expect an int, there it is. There it is, chat, that's the initial state. 
Okay, so that's helpful to know because now we need to grab uh, the parent mailbox. What, o what other state did we put on here? Parent mailbox. So let's say state initial state will equal state. And this is going to have on it, uh, let's see here. Let's close this side, go up here so we can see this. We have our parent mailbox. What up, Billy? Maybe we don't need the mailbox in the state, but this will be parent mailbox. Missed will be none right now. Status will be um, stopped. And the WebSocket URI will be from here. So let's just say this is a URI for now. This might end up being optional, but and this will be initial state. Gotta go bring in none, of course. All right, so we don't have type errors anymore. So we'll say handle start, and this will get our, uh, just get our state. And this will get our uh, state, which will be WebSocket server. And in here, this is where we spin up our miss server. So we can go to back to our redirect server. We can copy this basically verbatim. This will be WebSocket. Actually, I'm gonna leave to see if C Sharp fits on Twitch County with the Microsoft Talon. Good luck, Billy. Have a, uh, hope your day gets better, man. Let's bring in mist, import uh, mist. Is that how I do that? Probably gonna need that. So let's just bring that in. And we want a new router. We do need that. So let's copy the new router pattern. Do, do. And copy you, bring you over. This is going to be a WebSocket server. This will actually be like state. And we'll come in here. This will be state. This will be webs. That uh, request. Let's bring you over. Down here. Got the response. Now here we need to get, um, what is the HTTP verb on a WebSocket server? It doesn't even include one. It's just like, yo, for any uh, for any verb, we hit WebSocket. What? I guess I can look at Ryan's. Ryan's is probably a good one to look at. Let's close some of this stuff. Oh, that's a good one for tomorrow. Look at that. Do we close Ryan's stuff? We must have. Uh, what HTTP verb for WebSocket? OK, it's a get. Cool. So let's grab that. Come up here. Drop that in there. And let's go ahead and sort these. 
That's already sorted. Okay. So down here, this is going to be a get. Did I bring in get? I did bring in get. Uh, so maybe we add like a missed. So I'm, I'm starting to see some uh, repeated patterns here. So let's open up missed. We'll make that. And let's grab. Um, well, let's just get this working first and then we can refactor rather than going down that rabbit hole. This is going to be a um, Let's see if we can just get this working. This will be a response uh, dot new 200. And we'll then say, pipe that into response dot set body. And we'll just, yeah, we'll do the same thing. We'll just give it a 200 to start. Paste that. All right, so this looks reasonable. And let's go look at our token fetcher again. Yeah. So we can copy basically, we can copy this pattern here, or we'll come in here and we'll say we have this default Uh, we'll put that up top. Default WebSocket URI. And that'll be WS. Localhost. Uh, what port should we put this on? We'll put it on 3001. And this will be WS. And we need to bring in URI right there. Good morning, Meta. So this can be an option, I guess. And then in here, we'll say, we'll basically copy this pattern over here. We'll say function new WebSocket URI. Hi, Alice. And this will take, I think this just needs to take a uh, um, URI. In fact, I don't even think we need to do that.
we broke OCaml today. Just psych yourself out about how it's the best language like all the other .NET people on the internet. <laughs> You're in the company of the Hamburglar if you like C-sharp, which I don't know if that's a good company or not. Big Bean playing the long con on tech Twitter, likely the whole camel thing was a psyop to get people in BNB. <laughs> Did we tweet at the same time? That's amazing. That's so good. Create an image of a shady cabal of beam slash OTP slash Erlang slash Elixir slash Gleam uh, programmers secretly uh, over taking over tech Twitter and OCaml Twitter. I don't know. Good luck. Big Beam is real. Can I use JS to work on that project? What do you mean by that, Shadow Tiger? So down here, we'll just do a um, option, um, let's get the URI. So we'll say let uh, URI equals option dot unwrap, and this will be our default WebSocket URI. In fact, we can just do that in line, that's fine. There we go. That's pretty good. Add uh, the Elixir and Erlang logo. Elixir, Erlang, and By doing contributing. Are you talking about um, create Melange app shadow? <laughs> Roasted. Functional programming is not a cult. Well. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Make another variant. Uh, n no, you, there's not a lot of places to write uh, JavaScript in this app. You're going to have to write ReasonML and OCaml. This compiles the JavaScript, but it, um, it uses ReasonML and OCaml. Which I'm happy to help you with. If you want to like pick up a ticket or something. Um, we'll do this one. This one's pretty funny. Uh, where was that meta tweet? Was, I lost it already. Did I close Twitter? I did close Twitter. God, I have so many tabs open. How'd that get the whole way over here? All right, man, I'll try that. If it's better, I'll delete my tweet and we'll respond. Thank you for the follow there, uh, Tom Dabrowski. Tom Dabrowski, Tom Dabrowski.
All right, so we have that, and now we want to come down here and we want to actually start our server. Oh my god, that's so good. That's so good, Meta. <laughs> oh, fuck. I deleted it. I think I got it, though. I think I got it. I think I'm okay. Let me delete this. All right. Uh, I'll do the undo repost. And I think it's on my clipboard. It is. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. At least I saved it. Let's see if it spits out another one. No, I don't like that one as much. We'll give it one more try. This one's so good though. I don't even think I need to change it. Uh, why, I don't wanna tag Louie, I wanna tag TJ. I don't wanna tag Ryan. Uh, where is the right Ryan? Beam work makes the dream work. Nope. This one is definitely the good one. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good, Meta. Uh, shout out, Meta. Chad, if you're not following Meta, you should follow Meta. I don't say that often, but uh, you should follow Meta. All right, so we are starting our server. That's running. The state's fine. And then how does... Raw hat upgrade this. So in here, in the router, we come in here. Let's just see if this even starts, right? We're gonna have to figure out how to start all this. I'm not convinced we need this mailbox in the state. So let's actually delete it rather than possibly carrying around stuff we don't need. Uh, it will be public. Right now, the library we're building is called Glitch, which is just going to be the generic um, kind of like uh, Twitch SDK in Gleam, and that's completely open source, and we are building out the functionality we need to uh, start building the bot. All right. Now, if we go to event sub, this thing needs to spin up. We come here and we say WebSocket server. We're going to have to come up here and we're going to say import glitch slash event sub slash WebSocket server. And you started that by doing this. So this will be WebSocket server dot, whoa, that's not what we wanted. 
So let's say we get let WebSocket server equals WebSocket server dot new, and new is gonna take um, where's our new function? It takes a parent mailbox, which is our let's take this, we'll call this mailbox. And then um, And then a WebSocket URI, we'll just say none and use the defaults. Import Gleam slash option, and we want to bring in some or none. Oh, we're up here, right. So I suppose what was start? I think this was the initial state. So this is our new function. And what does worker pass in? It passes a nil. I still haven't fully wrapped my head around OTP. takes an A. I don't even know what an A is. Child spec is returning. It is also the argument. Okay, so in here, we would say I don't even know what this will be yet, but this is gonna say, this is gonna be a function that takes, I guess we can ignore that because it's gonna be nil. Fair. Buddy, up. Up. Take the morning, buddy. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Where's your breakfast, Goose? 
I hope their chewy box gets delivered today because they may or may not be out of food. I need to make emotes for the dogs. Do. Winnie, you want to come up? Winnie. Okay. What are we missing here? Oh, we forgot to close the lambda. Also, final, final interview today. Does this look okay? Should I get like a higher neck? Mm, I, I would. It. it looks kind of weird. It does look weird. Thank you for your feedback. Do you need another coffee? Hey. I said thank you for your feedback. Do you need another coffee? Yes, please. That's what I thought. Meta says, hi, Bessie Mod, miss you. Miss you too, Meta. Do you use any NeoVim distro or did you configure it by yourself? I configured it by myself, Machete. My dot files are here. And then I have a Neo, I have a video on YouTube walking through my config line by line. So play game ends up returning nil. That's interesting. So I guess we Do we need any, I guess we just say actor.continue. And we can pass um, the state, right? Yeah, okay, so we can do state dot dot, and then we'll say status is gonna be running. And what is this type here? What does worker give us? That's a child spec. Okay. I don't fully understand. Does Neovim support building like Love 2D game framework? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know what that is, uh, Barnacle. <laughs> the message, the argument, and it returns. I wish this had better examples by the worker function. Chat, we are five followers away from 3,000 followers. If you're in here lurking, give your boy a follow. Let's get to 3,000. Let's go. Thank you, thank you. Rethal and Milham, I appreciate both of you. What is this upset about? Oh, okay, that's fine.
So we still never actually start the worker. We have to call start spec, I think. Or do we call start? My actor dot start. So that's a function. Sure. I still don't understand the worker function. Like I don't know what this A is. I don't know what the A is. And this doesn't even like type it. If you wish to change the type of the argument for later children, see returning function. Examples. Returning, ah, returning. As each child is added to a supervisor's children, a new argument is prepared with which to start the next child. By default, argument is the same as the previous argument, but this function can be used to change it to something else by passing a function that takes the previous argument and the sender of the previous child. So we get a previous we get that we get the subject for that one i don't even know what the use case for this would be okay so in here You want to see how unathletic my one golden retriever is? Mm -hmm. He cannot catch ice to save his life. Wait, tell me when he's in frame. Hold on, let me uh, update the... Oh, these are so cold, Dylan. Go ahead. Ready? Oh, it got in the plant. Here, buddy, try again. I don't think they can see him. He oh. needs to be, like, right here. Buddy, come over here. Come closer. Back up a little bit. Back up. Okay, back up. Did, is this fine? Can you see him here? Yeah, he's in. Well, I got that one. Oh. That was his fifth or sixth ice cube. He doesn't need any more. Okay. Here you go, Winnie. That one went in the plant. That's all. I have your copy on my side. Thank you. So this is gonna be our WebSocket server, I guess. And then we pass that to, um, I guess this becomes supervisor dot children. No, this would be supervisor dot add. And this would get our WebSocket server. And this would get children. Yeah. And then this gets passed into start. So this will be let underscore equals um, supervisor dot start and that takes our children tart start children and what does this return us this returns us a subject i 
think we can return this. Oh, no, we say let assert okay state. That's still not right. What are you? This is something. Um, let's just brief. What did I pass before? Let underscore equals. This returns us. Thank you, Boo. Mm -hmm. Will you let the dogs out whenever you're done streaming? What? Will you let the dogs out whenever you're done streaming? Yeah, I have my one on one at 10 for okay. 30 minutes, but I'll let them out at 10 30. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, also, just a side note, how insane does my hair look? Since I fell asleep with it wet, it's... It's fine. Does it look fine? Yeah, it's fine. Not, like, unruly? No, you're fine. Okay. Great, thank you. Appreciate you. I'm gonna go change my shirt. I'm gonna stay. Yeah, I gotta work. So I guess we can... I don't know what this subject is. I don't know what this returns. Start start a supervisor from a given init function. Um, okay, so this will be our init function. So let's actually just rename this to, I can't rename that, it's annoying. The init argument pass to children the init argument passed to children will be nil and the maximum restart it tends to be one restart per five seconds. Okay. What does it, I don't know what this subject is. Using Docker again, really making me appreciate Nick's. Yeah, same, I, I have that same vibe at work. I don't know what this subject is. I guess we can look at the source. Start spec. So what does start spec do? Actor dot start spec. Okay. And that takes, what does the doc say here before we Worker, start, we add the worker, we start the spec, it has some children. I'm assuming this is just our process. I don't know what this will ever receive on. If we look at actor.start spec, we make a subject. Okay. What do you end up returning? Winnie, no. Where did this channel come from? Oh, I see. That's coming from a select, and we're selecting on this selector. We have an act subject, which that gets passed into this initialized actor thing. What up, Chaz? Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. 
I'm building my own, um, I'm building my own. Basically the same thing as Ryan's building, just in Gleam. So I think this, what we get back here, this subject, I think this is the child's, I think this is the child's uh, subject. So this will be a WebSocket mailbox, WebSocket server mailbox. So let's put on here. Um, so that's how I can communicate back to the child, I'm assuming. So if we look at our WebSocket server, when we start, we send the process, the parent mailbox, the mailbox. Thank you for the follow, Rickib. We are so close to 3,000 followers, chat. We are at 2,998. We need two more followers to hit 3,000. Let's go, Chaz, thank you. Come on, chat. There's gotta be one person lurking out there that doesn't follow. Three K already? I've got two nine 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 on my screen. So let's go ahead and throw a uh, web socket server mailbox as a subject of something. I don't know what this is gonna be yet. Come on chat, we need one more. One follow to hit 3K. Running. And it says this is down at the bottom. Our type is a subject of message. Okay, I guess that's fine. Someone did have follow. Lol.
All right, so this might work. So let's give this a run, and then I'm going to have to wrap up because I have a one-on-one -on -one in five minutes that I have to get ready for. So let's uh, close test chat, and we'll do that, and we'll write a function called uh, pub function test uh, websocket or event sub, I guess. And we'll make that that. And then here we'll bring in um, and sub. We want to get this guy. So let's bring in go like that. Change event sub slash event sub. And this will be event sub dot new. And we'll say let es equals that and then we'll say uh, let something equals um, I, so this should theoretically work. We we'll even throw a test chat in there. Why not? All right. All right, no build errors. So it should be running. Uh, okay. Unexpected message. I don't know what that means. We got our hello chat at least. I wonder if our WebSocket server is running. So let's come over here. And this will be, um, let's rename this to glitch. Uh, and then we'll have, uh, we'll add. Let's just use this quick. So it should be on 3001 and WS. We should get a 200 back. Nope. So why did that? I wonder if our, we're getting an unexpected message somewhere. We're gonna have to debug this tomorrow because I, I gotta go chat. All right, let's go raid somebody. Uh, we will raid Tej. All right. See you, chat.